Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pro Wrestling Inside and Out. This is our look at programs, photographs of our collection that we have. And we're going to start out with probably one of the greatest world junior champions of all time. Here we go. Yeah, Danny, Danny Hodge. Danny Hodge. Ronnie, you want to go over there and zoom in, cameraman, for us there? And uh, we'll uh, we'll turn off this, too. Danny Hodge was uh, – there many not many people could beat this man. Tremendous. Uh, this is uh, our father. Uh, this was uh, photographs that he had uh, uh, collected throughout the years, and uh, I believe probably sold. I think you're right. Some point uh, during his deal. Okay, Rodney, you can go uh, off of that real quick. Well, all right. The uh, next thing we're going to look at Southeastern Championship Wrestling. And I don't know what year this, I don't know what, 1978. 1978. That would have been, a, that would have been a little bit before the, uh, the breakup with all the people, but we see Don Fargo here. He was the world brass nuts champion. Uh, inside Ronnie Garvin, Rip Smith. Y'all remember a Rip Smith? I remember the name. He looks familiar and it may have wrestled under another name in other places, but he looks familiar. Now, here we go. No DQ match. Slinker, special guest referee, as we see Big Joe LaDuke against the Mongolian Stomper. And I believe this was right after they did the thing where they smashed the concrete the cinder, cinder, yeah, cinder block. block. <laughs> yeah, with the Joe sledgehammer. Because the card was Rip Smith against Don Fargo, Bob Roop against Ron Wright. Professor Boris Malenko versus Rodney's favorite, Kevin Sullivan. Mm -hmm. uh, no time limit, Southeastern Tag Team title, Dennis Condry and Phil Hickerson against Robert Fuller and Jimmy Golden. Uh, no DQ, the Mongolian Stomper, and Don Carson against Joe LaDuke and uh, Ronnie Garvin, special referee, Ron Slinker, U.S. Karate and Judo champion. So uh, there was uh, – there. Here's, uh, here's a very young Jimmy Golden. And there we see Dennis Condry, Phil Hickerson, and Ron Wright on the set. Southeastern Championship Wrestling. They were a great tag team. All right. Then on the other side, Wrestling Fans International Association's top wrestler, Robert Fuller. Look at him styling and profiling over there with them, uh, with them uh, sunglasses on. Uh, and here is Kevin Sullivan. Kevin Sullivan there. He uh, <laughs> Well, that's just a shell of Kevin Sullivan. <laughs> Very good wrestler, by the way, at that point in time. So, uh, all right, here we go. World Heavyweight Champion, NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Harley Race. And uh, he's going to be at the uh, – looks like he's going to be at the Bill Meyer Stadium. Wrestler versus the Knoxville News Sentinel is going to happen. Uh, and also on the uh, 23rd. A wrestler, does it say play W? I guess in the, I'm guessing that is a uh, baseball game. So, hey, they did baseball games. At least they've been doing before the matches. <laughs> and uh, then we see uh, Robert Fuller here as well. I wrote on that. That was uh, – I won't even go into that one there. Picture of J.C. Dykes, Jimmy Dykes. Uh, you know, these things used to say what year this was. But uh, great manager, by the way. We never got to see him, but the people that uh, say say he was one of the one of the best. And uh, here is a publicity photograph for the UWF, the Universal Wrestling Federation. That's Bill Watts's, not that crazy uh, Herb Abrams. <laughs> this is the there we see Freebirds, Michael Hayes, and Terry Gordy, and Terry Gordy with the UWF. I believe that's the heavyweight championship, isn't yep. it? Yep, yep, it is. Is that what that says on there? Great picture, by the way. This would be put in the newspapers and stuff. Another great wrestler from Continental Championship Wrestling, 1987, Scott Armstrong. Great pictures there. Here is Birmingham, Boutwell Auditorium. No, I don't believe this is about. I think this is State Fair Arena. Uh, there you see Ronnie West with the uh, White Lightning, Tim Horner. Uh, I think he was the U.S. Junior Champion at the time. Uh, here is a photograph. 
Wrestling 2, Ronnie West. And uh, this would have probably been about 1979, 1980. Uh, rode together a lot on the trips. And uh, Wrestling 2 would keep his mask on uh, for 45 miles. And he would say, you think you're ever going to take that thing off? <laughs> and he would not. He hated it. Hate it. Hate it, didn't you, Rodney? Going in the stores with two with the mask on. He absolutely hated it. He just did. He didn't want to do it. He just, man, I ain't going in there with you. You're going to wear that. Uh, here is Harley Race, NWA world champion. On the back of it, Dick Slater at the TV station. Uh, drew a lot of money. Now, this was 1978. This program's 1978. Um, uh, who was the, who's the, I can't see. So, uh, Am I got it up there good enough? Yeah. Who's the champion? Got, well, got Walter McDaniel, Tarly Race, the World Heavyweight Champion, Georgia Tag Team Champions, Dorian, Terry Funk, uh, Georgia Television Champion, Thunderbolt Patterson, Georgia Heavyweight Champion, the Superstar. And then we, uh, let's see if I can, see if I can uh, get this over here so we can see this picture good. Yeah, it's Walter McDaniel. And this is when they still had the set uh, where they had the microphones on the set. And on the on the uh, monitors, Terry Funk, and the, uh, this is when they kept the Georgia Tag Team belts in a in a display case. Who who oh oh they they left they they were on there the whole time they that's how they all right so here we go. Rick Martell and Tommy Rich against Stan Hansen and Mosca wrestling two on fire against generic wrestler number one in the mask. Ronnie West, West in the West. In the corner. He's saying, hey, that's the finish. I get to go back for a while. Uh, at the great Atlanta City Auditorium. Look he might that. have been the only referee that night, though. So he might have been just staying in the ring. A lot of times he refereed the whole night. Uh, you know, you don't see guys do this anymore. No. no not, not very boat. often. You know, I, I always got over. I always got over. All right, here is Thunderbolt Patterson and Ole Anderson. And uh, then the stardust pressure, uh, Dusty against the superstar. All right. That's the one where Dusty told him he was going to take his mask off. He's going to take everything in and be running naked down Peachtree Street. <laughs> All right, Rodney, I don't know if I can say this. Now. Wrestling one and two against uh, uh, Dalton, Jim Dalton, and Butch Malone. And that was, uh, let's see, uh, remember New Year's night, Monday, January the 1st. At the Omni, and it looked like that was the same match. Uh, Wall McDaniel, give him the chop. The king there, Rufus R. Uh, Jones and Santa West, Claus. Still right there. <laughs> yep. I, I don't remember Santa Claus being in the crowd that night. You know, it's it's, it's funny. We used to, we went to this we went to this TV station so many times. Uh, a lot of times we sat in this back. We actually sat in the back back row. We'd sit way back here in the back. And 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 this this would have been a time we would have sat back here. Uh, in 1980, 81, 82, we would have been in the back uh, on the sets and stuff. But uh, always enjoyed the fans. There was only maybe – well, how many fans was in there? hundred? Oh, yeah, I know it. No, that's probably they, – they probably had close to 150, 200 in that studio. I was watching this uh, Georgia Championship Wrestling from 79. That place was packed. Kenru. By the way, I hung this up. Uh, that's the reason I still got of this. Dusty Rhodes on the bottom of it. <laughs> Publicity photograph that was used uh, many places. Uh, Ric Flair, World Heavyweight Champion. You know, I believe the reason we got all these, they, they, for some reason, they said it was too light, or something. and and we ended up with a ton of these things. Uh, here is another publicity shot for Ron Garvin. Uh, this was actually on the back cover of the program, uh, I believe. I believe Les Thatcher was doing the program at this at this time. I'm not for sure, but I believe he was. Uh, here is Tony Atlas on the back of there. Stressling two and Tommy Rich. All right. I'm not going to be able to see this, so uh, y'all tell me if. Uh... Looks like Carl Cox against, says, Curtis Brazil. Uh, bottom, Carl Fergie and Bob Armstrong. And then on the other side is Ernie Ladd and Ole Anderson. 
and Early's doing the big leg drop. Uh, Dad's doing the referee, and it says right there, Lad go does uh, does in a, an opponent as Ron West and Ole Anderson looks on, and then it's Buzz Sawyer against somebody with Tommy Weathers and refereeing in that match. I think, that, yeah, I think that was Tommy Weathers, and, and this was 1979, by the way. This was this was 1979. All right, I'll open this up. So, uh, that's like Bobby Heenan jumping off the top rope. <laughs> Tony Atlas with a sleeper hold. And you've got uh, Jock Goulet and, uh, let's see, is that Ricky Fields? Yeah, it's Ricky Fields. And down at the bottom is Chris Markoff and Buzz Sawyer. All right. Uh, did we go that way? Yeah, we've seen that one. Oh, uh, evidently, uh, I went the wrong way. Didn't and I? it just so happens that I watched a video on YouTube 1979 about this time. Um uh, and it's just great stuff. Ole Anderson, Ernie Ladd, the Georgia Tag Team Champion Superstar, Billy Graham, Stan Hansen, and uh, Bob Armstrong, Ox Baker. All right, one more, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll see what people have to say. Hey, look at this little uh, drawing here. Now this was Columbus. And this is Columbus, it? Georgia. Bill. So this looks like it says Bill Paxton uh, did this. It looks like uh, a great T-shirt. There yeah, was a t-shirt. There, there was, was a great artist. Wrestling too would get all kinds of stuff the fans would make for him. They even made him a Columbus heavyweight championship belt, I think, at one time, and had a it was it had Mr. Wrestling number two on it. It was good looking stuff. They presented it to him earlier in the show. Hey Jack, um, did you make the did you go to the show? It was March not sure, sure did. Comes up Georgia Heavyweight Championship is Austin Idol against Mr. Wrestling number two. Georgia Tag Team Championship, Ivan Koloff, Alexis Smirnoff against Tony Atlas, Lars Anderson, Baron Von Reska against Kevin Sullivan, Jim Nelson against Chief J. Strongbow, Bobby Garrett against Big Bill Drummo. Yep, I remember that. On the back. I remember buying a lot of those programs. I wish I still had them. All right. And then we got... Uh... Tommy Rich in action in there. Uh, that's just some of that. That's just some of the programs and the and the photographs and stuff that we've uh, we've collected throughout the years. And uh, so uh, I said, let's how, how do I turn myself off of there? Oh, I can do that. It's been a while since I turned myself off. Of there. Uh, just great, great, you know, great memories of professional wrestling. And Jack, I know you got great memories of Columbus, Georgia. Sure do. Uh, and you said you might have been here for this one. I'm pretty sure I was. Uh, Did you ever go to the TV, Jack? Occasionally, I didn't. I didn't get to go there a lot, but probably about once a month, I would. I would make. The TV. I love that place. Yeah, I love that place. They charged to get in there as well. Did they not? Uh, two dollars. Two dollars. I remember. I remember us walking right by. <laughs> walking right by them. And you know, Jack a, was probably at these matches. It's possible we were there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. undoubtedly, because I remember your dad being there. Uh, I remember meeting uh, Jim Nelson there. Uh, and we, so, were, we were probably yeah. there because uh, dad, uh, he kicked somebody there one time in the audience. We'll tell that story one day. Uh, Irvin Smith is what Charles said, this, the, this Rip Smith guy. Uh, he said his name was Irvin Smith as well, but he didn't wrestle very long, I don't think. No. Oh. I don't believe so. Uh, Richard Hood has uh, checked uh, checked in with us. Uh, I thought Phil Hickerson was great on the mic and in the ring. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I agree with that. Uh, Rick Brooks said uh, Danny Hodge roughed up Ole when o Ole was starting out. Yeah, Ole tells the story that there was a list, there was a group of people standing there, and he looked at Danny Hodge, and he said, I'll take that little one right there. And, and he said it wasn't no time before he had me hurt. <laughs> He said he, he had me tied up. And he said that was the only man I was scared of after that was Danny Hodge. He said, that, I said that, yes, sir, to him. Yeah, that little one uh, uh, wrestled at about 220. <laughs> and, then, and, could, and, could, and could hurt anybody he got in the ring with. <laughs> yes, he could. Guys, I don't think WTCG uh, Johnson held that many. I, you know, I can't remember. I know it was around 100 people, though, I'm thinking. Uh, it could have been less. That was if that for what if they, however many people they are, they were really loud and they were into it. Well, they were. Jack, thanks for filling me in about the North American belt situation. That I know Buddy was recognized as the retired champion. 
Well, they continued on the, the title after that. They just retired that uh, that particular belt, and then they had a new belt created. You know, Brian, unfortunately, we did not have wrestler sign stuff. Uh, and, and there was a reason for that. You would be considered a mark by the by the them, and uh, our dad just did not want us doing it. And uh, so we never got anybody to sign anything. Never got a picture with anyone. Uh, unfortunately, we just I, did. yeah. As long as I was in, I didn't start making pictures with guys, and really until after JYD passed away. And then I, I, I thought I just yeah, I, I missed. We, we wish that I had that. We were only allowed for whatever reason. Dad let us get uh, some uh, autographs from Dick Slater and Mister Wrestling Two, which I have it somewhere here. And we had to do it, and we didn't want Dick Slater to sign it. Dad had to make us to get Slater to sign it. Wrestling Two was the only wrestler that we actually went in the back and met. Mm -hmm. The rest we met, but just circumstance would meet. Yes, we, but we wanted to meet Wrestling Two. Because Wrestling 2 was our hero, and uh, we wanted to meet him. And then we got to uh, ride with him so many towns. I, I'll never forget. He brought us into the – we was in Rome, and he said, hey, we're fixing to start riding together. And he said, if anybody asks, I'm, I'm your uncle. I'm your uncle. And if you tell anyone, anybody, that I'm Wrestling 2, he said, I will whip you myself. And we believed what he said was true. And dad, dad was there and said, and he will, and I will allow him to do so. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but we rode with him uh, from like 1979 until like 1983, 84. Yeah. Uh, and, and enjoyed, uh, because he, he, he was a lot like us, you know, he didn't do the things that uh, a lot of people would do. And uh, so he enjoyed uh, riding with us. All right, Jack, anything you want to talk about uh, before we uh, move on? By the way, Brian wants us to buy some autographs. I'm not buying no autographs. Well, I'll just emphasize that, you know, a lot of times in this industry, when you're on the outside looking in, there's a lot of guys that you look up to and you kind of hero worship in a way, and then when you get to know them, you're disappointed. Wrestling, too, was one of those guys that did not disappoint. He was the hero behind the scenes just like he was in the ring. Great, great guy. Yeah, he he certainly was, and Bob Armstrong was another one. Yep, that was a tremendous person, and uh, you know, even though you know, there's a lot of bad things being uh, threw around about Tony Atlas, he was always good to us. Yes, uh, you know, I'm not saying he ain't nuts or anything. Now I don't know, I can't tell you, but he was always great to us. Uh, he always treated us really good. So, uh, and there was a lot of people that was that way, but. Uh, and then there was a, there were some that you meet that you went to. Huh, I wish I would have met that person. That wasn't until later, though. I don't think no. I, it no. was. It wasn't not until the nineties WCW days that that started. Yeah, we. I, I do remember the night that we went back and saw two. It was a really, and he was really good with us. I, I, he was really good with us, and the fact of the matter is not. It wasn't just special for us that night. That's the way he treated all the fans when he yep. met them. Really great. Uh, Robert Grice, is there an uh, autograph of a current wrestler you would want? No. No. Uh, I would take Vince McMahon on the check. <laughs> well, there you go. No, there's not a wrestler out there. Uh, uh, probably the only performer that I would like to meet, you know, not, and that's not a wrestler, would probably be Dolly Parton. I think other than that, I don't know of anyone else that I would uh, <laughs> I've only got two. Here's one, Bill Eady, the Master Superstar, and I've got uh, Lou Fez. I can't reach him. That's the only two I have after uh, 46 years of doing this. Uh, would there have been people I like to took pictures? Yes, I, I would love to have done that. Uh, it wasn't was it? We we're probably frowned on back then, so uh, you you wouldn't have done it. Uh, no, it not ever, inside the dressing room would have got you fired. Yes, it would. You know, so uh, now, even, even, you know the the pictures you saw of guys together from back in the day. Now <laughs> it was because they were legit friends outside of the business, uh, yeah, and right. so those pictures are still they're hard to see. I mean, they're hard to find. There's not a lot of. Them. No. Uh, I enjoy looking through these. Though. And and honestly, if we would have been autograph hounds, we would have been put to the house. Yep. Yeah. 
Uh, Bob, hey, uh, Brian said he met uh, Dolly Parton. I have met Dolly Parton a few times. I used to work currency. She's a wonderful lady. I would. I that is the only person I would like to meet, and I probably would like to get an autograph of uh, Dolly Parton. I've always I've always liked her, so I would uh, I'd like to uh, I'd like to meet her. All right, guys. Anything we need to talk about before we leave tonight? We got it. All right. We'll give you more. We'll show you more. Uh, we've got all kinds of programs and pictures. And uh, we also have a book with all the cards for a long period of time. While Ole Anderson, our father, was was booking World Championship Wrestling. And we'll go through some of those at uh, some point and uh, let you know the cards that were done uh, during those uh, times. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, give us the big thumbs up. Subscribe to the page. Make sure you subscribe to YouTube because it'll tell you every time that we upload a video. Well, we hope they do. Now, not always. Not always will that happen, but most of the time we hope. And go one step further. Hit that notification bell. It'll let you know every time that we do upload a video. It'll come right up and say, hey, guess what? We're live. And watch the video right there next to Rodney. We'll see you on the next video right here on Pro Wrestling. Inside. No, we didn't say that Ole Anderson was our father. No, we did not say Ole Anderson was our father. No. Our father is Ron West. <laughs> there not we go. Ole Anderson. No. <laughs> Thank you all so much. And we'll see everyone on the next edition of Pro Wrestling Inside Now.